Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Clements, the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator at University of Florida IFAS, Sarasota County Extension. We are here today with our partnering agency, Mayaka River State Park, to talk about the LIFE program, Learning in Florida's Environment. And today we're going to have some friends join us to talk about freshwater bird adaptations. Adaptations are characteristics on a bird's body or behaviors that a bird does that helps a bird survive in its environment. And this is a perfect place to talk about freshwater bird adaptations because Mayaka River flows right through Mayaka River State Park. Freshwater here in Florida are things like rivers, ponds, lakes, and streams. And the freshwater environment is very important to our watersheds and our overall water quality here in Sarasota County. So let's go meet up with my friends and talk about freshwater bird adaptations. Shh. Before we talk about birds, let's check out these cool alligators. Okay, Miss Sarah, go ahead. Hi, I'm Sarah Davis and I'm the Sarasota County 4-H Extension Agent and I am super excited to be here today to talk about birds. The special kind of scientist that studies birds is a, can you guess it? An ornithologist. So we're going to be ornithologists today and maybe you all can be an ornithologist in your backyard. So when you're an ornithologist, you kind of check out different adaptations, characteristics, or features of different birds. They have the main features to kind of check out is to look at their feet and to look at their uh, beaks. Uh, birds that have really sharp beaks um, definitely uh, eat different things than birds that have other kinds of beaks. So we're going to look at these bird beaks first over here on this a panel here, you can see the first one, the osprey, has a really sharp beak. They're part of our raptors and they're a carnivore. They tear into all kinds of cool stuff. So mostly uh, looking for fish. You got a roseate spoon bill that has a really cool kind of spoon uh, shaped bill that's called a tactile feeder. They um, actually move their head back and forth and as soon as they feel movement, they snap and eat it up. And then you have a duck. Ducks tend to kind of filter uh, their food. So they um, kind of take a little bit of water in and filter out what's yummy inside there. Maybe some algae or some other cool stuff floating in the water that tastes good. And you have another type of beak there on the heron. They uh, spear their fish. So typically they're kind of just sort of hanging out, waiting, and they spear their fish and eat it uh, right up. So these different adaptations help kind of scientists distinguish what kind of bird uh, that can be. So as you're looking for birds, you may want to check out what kind of beaks. Um, maybe you would look at their, also their shape and their color, and then their feet also tell us some really interesting stuff about birds. So you can see here on these feet right there, they are super, super, super sharp. Those are called talons. And these birds that have talons, a lot of the birds in the raptor family, just like the osprey or eagle or owls, they tear up their uh, food uh, with those really, really sharp talons. Uh, this uh, feet, the snowy egret, they have yellow feet. So they kind of use their feet differently. Their yellow feet is an adaptation, almost like a fishing lure. They kind of scoot their feet back and forth and then uh, it attracts fish and then they use their sharp beak to spear them. And then check out these webbed feet. So webbed feet, what does that tell us? It tells us that this bird uh, likely spends a lot of time in the water. So birds like ducks have webbed feet and they use those to swim uh, back and uh, forth. Another really cool bird that we find here at Mayaka is the limpkin. If you are lucky to hear the limpkin in the wild. It's a super awesome call. Sometimes they almost say that it's like screeching or screaming. But 
But these cool birds kind of hang out in our freshwater wetlands and their beak is adapted to eating specific uh, animals called apple snails. And I'll hold them very carefully in my hand. Maybe across the blue background, you can see them better. But these uh, beaks are specially adapted and they kind of scoot in and they can eat out the cool animal that lives inside. So these apple snails live in the freshwater swamps here in Southwest Florida. And they're pretty dependent on water and it's super important to help protect our wetlands because that help protects food sources and the habitat that all these cool birds live in. Now we're gonna share some interesting um, facts about using binoculars so you can maybe take a pair of binoculars outside in your backyard and see what cool birds live in the habitats that you visit. Hello, I'm Juliana Costanzo and I'm the 4-H Youth Development Intern with University of Florida IFAS Extension and Sustainability, Sarasota County. I'm going to show you how to use binoculars. The first step is putting the band around your neck so that you don't drop them because they have glass in them and we want other people to be able to use them. Next, you want to make sure that you don't touch the glass. So we have glass here and we also have glass here. We look through glass and then there's also glass on the other end of the binoculars. And you don't want to touch it and smudge it because then you won't be able to see very clearly. Okay, so how do we adjust the binoculars? Well, we adjust them like this first and we move them so that they fit our eyes and the distance between our eyes. And we know that we've adjusted them the correct way when we see one image and not two separate circles. So if we see two separate circles, we need to bring them closer together until we see one image. All right, I am seeing one image, that's awesome. And next, I'm gonna adjust the focus, that's this right here. And so in order to adjust the focus, what I'm gonna do is find something in the environment that I want to focus on. And I really like that patch of flowers over there. So I'm gonna try to focus on that patch of flowers. All right, so now I'm gonna adjust the focus until they're very clear. And you'll know that you've adjusted the focus correctly when they are not blurry and whatever you're trying to look at is very clear. And whenever you're trying to look at a different distance or something in a different spot, you'll have to adjust the focus again. All right, and that is how you use binoculars. Hello everybody, my name is Cassidy House and I am the Natural Resources and Sustainability Communication and Outreach Intern here at UF IFAS Sarasota County. And today I'm going to talk to you about bird schools. So let's get started. This one right here, actually take a moment and guess, what bird do you think this skull belongs to? Now, if you guessed great horned owl or just an owl, you're correct. You can tell that this is a skull of a great horned owl because of its adaptations. So adaptations are characteristics, things on the bird's body, or behaviors, actions that the bird does, that help them stay alive and survive in their own environment. So one interesting adaptation of the great horned owl is its beak. As you can see, its beak is sharp and pointy. That is because it is a carnivore. It uses its beak to rip open its prey and eat it. But before it does that, it has to catch its prey, which it does through its talons. As you can see, a bigger picture right here. That's what its feet looks like, and that's how it catches its prey. All right, now let's talk about the roseate spoonbill. Say goodbye to the owl and hello to the spoonbill. And you can kind of see why it's named that way. Its beak does look like a spoon. The reason it looks like a spoon is because it has adapted to its method of eating. It does this thing called head swinging where it dips its spoon bill into the water and wiggles it side to side. This stirs up all the bugs and crustaceans in the water and allows the spoon bill to just snap and eat all of them that rose out of the water. Now this type of snap is instinctual, meaning the bird does it without thinking. That is one of its adaptations. We humans also have instincts. For example, if we accidentally touch a hot stove, we immediately yank our hand away. 
we don't sit there with our hand on the hot stove and think, hmm, I should take my hand off the stove because it hurts. No, it's instinctual. We just yank our hand away. That is the same type of feeling that the roseate spoonbill gets when it feels the bug stirring in the water. It instinctually snaps to eat its food. And that is one adaptation of how the roseate spoonbill survives in the environment. As you can see there. All right. Finally, we are going to talk about a duck. I'm sure you all have seen one of these before, but if you haven't, there is a picture. So, how does a duck get its food? Well, a duck gets its food by just opening its mouth and grabbing everything underwater. Now, imagine if you were to go into your fridge and just grab a bunch of food and put it in your mouth, just like the duck does. It grabs a bunch of food in the water and puts it in its mouth. Well, if you did that, just open the fridge and put food in your mouth, you would probably get a lot of stuff in there that you wouldn't want to eat. Well, the duck kind of runs into this problem too but it has a solution. It has adapted to this and has a solution for this problem. It has these little tooth-like notches called lametti that it uses to filter out all the unwanted water or food that it doesn't want to eat. So once it gets all the food in its mouth, it uses its teeth to filter out all the unwanted stuff. And that is one way in which the duck adapts to an environment to be able to survive and eat its dinner. All right, so next time you guys go out into your environment, make sure to take a pair of binoculars like Miss Juliana showed us and look for birds in your environment. See if you can use the binoculars to see any interesting characteristics or adaptations that those birds have had to survive in their environment. Well, thank you to Miss Sarah and Miss Juliana and Miss Cassidy for sharing all sorts of wonderful information about freshwater bird adaptations here at Mayaka River State Park. And now there is a great activity that you all can do at home or even at your school. Grab some binoculars if you have them, but if you don't have them, just take your eyeballs and go on outside and look for birds in your environment. When you find a bird, look at its beak, look at its feet, look at its body shape or colors of its feathers and even the behavior or what it's doing in the moment and see if you can determine what type of adaptations that bird has to help survive in the environment you found it in. And there's one other cool thing that you could do. You could even make your very own bird. So what I want you to do is imagine any environment. Maybe it's your favorite place. It doesn't have to be here in Florida. Maybe it's the mountains. Maybe it's the Arctic. Maybe it's even on Mars. And once you imagine your environment, think about what adaptations a bird would need to survive in that environment and draw the bird, draw its beak, draw its body, draw its feet with the adaptations that it would need to survive in the environment you had imagined. All right, I can't wait to see you for the next episode of Life. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>